I think it's relatively easy for a big operation like a restaurant to give somebody that specialized individual attention when they're probably only going to be in the establishment for one, maybe two hours at the most. You have to, with the hard volume that you deal with over there, still have to maintain that specialized attention over potentially months. How do you do that? Yeah, so the catch is a few things. It's volume as a firm. As a firm, we handle a lot of volume. But we don't let our attorneys have too many cases on their plate. We don't let our case managers have too many cases on their plate. So it's really important. That's kind of what we did. So I know there are firms that do volume like ours or even higher, but their attorneys might have several hundred or a thousand cases or more at once, right? We'll never do that. So what I do is take, okay, at a small firm, this is what the average attorney might have. And we just take that same model and then start to multiply it, right? So it makes it a lot easier for our attorneys and our case managers to have personal relationships with their clients because we're not overworking them. Mm. You don't overwork them, and that way your clients and potentially a public adjusters like myself who refer clients to you can still feel as if they refer to the right firm. Well, yeah, I mean, I hope they don't just feel that way. I hope it's true, right? And, you know, at the end of the day, this is a results-driven industry. There's a lot of people out there, public adjusters, contractors, attorneys, any side of the field. A lot of people that are out there talking about how great they are. Send me all your work, send me your business. If you are not helping people recover, then you should not be in this business. Mm. That's it. Oh, 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 oh. How are you? Man, the myth. I like the swag, man. The legend. Please, man, for the people who don't know, because I know they know, but remind them, who are you and what do you do? Yeah, I'm Galen Hare. I'm one of the partners at Insurance Claim HQ. Mm-hmm. And, and, and very succinct, right? I thought you were going to go into a whole soliloquy, but nah, you, they, when you have uh, intrinsic value, you don't really have to go that deep, right? No, I guess, but, uh, uh-huh. you know, I think... I think it's been great, you know, I think at this point the industry kind of knows who we are, what we do, but, you know, we're first party property casualty attorneys, so we help PAs, policyholders, and contractors get these claims paid fairly and quickly. Mm -hmm. Do you have a preferred uh, geographic area that you like to work in? So we're national, but our main office is here in Louisiana and we have offices all along the Gulf Coast. Mm -hmm. Where do you prefer to work? Oh man, I love Louisiana, that's Mm. my favorite place, but... You know, we're pretty happy anywhere where there's a disaster, anywhere we can help. Are you a native? I am not. I'm from Arlington, Texas, right outside Dallas. So how did you go from, because Texas is a, is a hot spot when it comes to claims, too. What made this be where you decided to, uh, what, what they call, uh, hang your shingle? <laughs> Pun intended. Yeah, so before I was even a lawyer, I came down during Hurricane Katrina to help. Um, so I was like gutting houses, volunteering, and then kind of everything worked from there. I like started a nonprofit, was helping people recover from the storm, and that was kind of my like aha, like mm-hmm. this is where I want to be, this is what I want to do. So I didn't even know when I lived in Texas that that was a big claim area. I didn't mm-hmm. learn that until after I started doing this work in Louisiana. Absolutely, because you, I know you mentioned uh, you thought it was. I'm trying to find the best way to say it, but you said you thought becoming an attorney was just out of nowhere, but your brother said, you've been talking about this. Yeah, you remember that, uh-huh. yeah. So, yeah, my little brother said that. He said, your whole life you've been talking about being a lawyer, you just kind of forgot as you got older. Mm-hmm, absolutely. But, so, what made you decide to come to this place? Is this like one of your favorite spots? Uh, this is a great spot. So it's called Bourbon House. That's mm-hmm. the name. Um, it's part of one of the larger families of restaurants here in New Orleans. In New Orleans, there's a lot of restaurants. We're known for our food. We have great food. However, there's like three or four families that have, like since New Orleans has been around, have been in the restaurant industry. So this isn't the only one. You know, they own a ton of restaurants. And somewhere, it's probably down here, all the different restaurants in their family, but they have steak houses and you know, other local restaurants. Mm-hmm. So this one sits at the foot of Bourbon Street. Anyone from here knows that you cannot find good food on Bourbon Street, but this is the only exception. Wow, so, there you so go. So here the food is great. This place has been around for quite some time. You know, they never stop. Like, you'll see them a, a day after a hurricane and they'll be rocking and Still open. And feeding people. Yeah. That's good. And because and, and they, they, they restaurant tours, and like you, it sounds like you said, it, for generations and generations, they know how to quick start. 
and exactly. prepare. Yeah, and this is all part of the Brennan family of restaurants. So mm -hmm. anytime you see Brennan's, Dickie Brennan's Steakhouse, this place, a lot of places that don't even have the Brennan name in it. So, mm -hmm. so, so that being said, do you relate with how you run your business to how these seasoned rent restaurateurs run theirs? Well, we watch them and learn, right? We obviously don't have the benefit of going back generations and generations and generations, but they're a machine, right? And, you know, one of the catches to running a business is learning how to give your customers, like, individual attention, but you have to run your entire team like it's a well-oiled operation. Mm -hmm. So these restaurants know how to do it, right? They're, the calculations that they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis are like crazy. You gotta, you, when you think about it, they have to know how much food to get in, how much food to get out, how to pull people in, how they're going to turn around these rooms, how they're going to get these tables clean, like every single thing. And a law firm really isn't different, you know. Our, our clients see the lawyer that they talk to and maybe the case manager. But what they don't see is like, we have to get the mail in, we have to get the mail out, we have to get money in, we have to get money out, we have to deal with mortgage companies, right? So our standard client, even if they only interact with one or two people for the whole time they're with us, there's probably seven or eight different people that are actually actively involved in helping them. Mm. And that was gonna be my next question to you because I think it's relatively easy for a big operation like a restaurant to give somebody that specialized individual attention when they're probably only gonna be in the establishment for one, maybe two hours at the most. You have to, with the hard volume that you deal with over there, still have to maintain that specialized attention over potentially months. How do you do that? Yeah, so the catch is a few things. It's volume as a firm. As a firm, we handle a lot of volume but we don't let our attorneys have too many cases on their plate. We don't let our case managers have too many cases on their plate. So it's really important, that's kind of what we did. So I know there are firms that do volume like ours or even higher, but their attorneys might have several hundred or a thousand cases or more at once, right? We'll never do that. So what I do is take, okay, at a small firm, this is what the average attorney might have, and we just take that same model and then start to multiply it, right? So it makes it a lot easier for our attorneys and our case managers to have personal relationships with their clients because we're not overworking them. Mm. You don't overwork them, and that way your clients and potentially a public adjusters like myself who refer clients to you can still feel as if they refer to the right firm. Well, yeah, I mean, I hope they don't just feel that way. I hope it's true, right? And, you know, at the end of the day, this is a results-driven industry. There's a lot of people out there, public adjusters, contractors, attorneys, any side of the field. A lot of people that are out there talking about how great they are. Send me all your work. Send me your business. If you are not helping people recover, then you should not be in this business. Mm. It's that simple, right? Mm -hmm. It's that simple. Get some warm breath for us So, hey, so how was the, uh, um, I was, I was instructing the class when you had your, uh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. So, man, I, I would have loved to no, know. No, look, it was definitely announced last minute uh -huh. and stuff. We were, we were, we were feeling our, we were feeling our way through the process. Uh-huh. Right? Uh, All right. It was so fun to do it for the first time, but it was so stressful to do it yeah. the first time because there's, like, I cared about only one aspect of it, which was, like, who are we going to get on that stage? What was the content going to be like, right? There were so many other aspects that, like, it was mind right? It's like, you got to make sure, you got to think through the whole thing, right? You got to make sure, like, there's a place for people to be and that place is good. You got to take care of their basic needs, like food, drinks, and bathrooms. And you got to make sure that's all handled. You got to think about it visually. You got to get those people there and all the logistics of getting the speakers in and out, what what has to happen there and how the presentation is going to look and work. And then you got to actually get people in the door, right? And what does that process look like? Um, I and just, I've never thought about it ever before. Gailey, I just had an idea. Man. Let me know what you think about this idea. Okay. What if, because you seem very transparent. Uh, I saw, I saw a, a comment where you put in a, a post where yeah. you were transparent about uh, do you think, do you not think there would be any value in setting up 
showing how that looks like is an exact to make estimate? <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Because you, cause 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 you got the general conditions, like you yeah. mentioned, like the uh, the bathroom, the food, the necessity, boom, line items, and then you then you got every uh, like a, a scrolling line item. Uh, yeah, exactly I think Bobby's estimate. already got all that in the spreadsheet, so it's oh, yeah. very easy. The, well, um, yeah, because what and what makes it clever is when you put it in an exact to make format. But, oh yeah, I agree. Yeah. but I'm saying we already have. Oh yeah, you it already have it. So it would be hard yeah. to figure out. Oh no, nah. that that would be that would be very clever in my opinion, and it would that connect. Would be hilarious, that'd be great. Uh huh. That. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, I you know because I knew so like we started with like a forty thousand dollar budget, right? <laughs> of and, like, course. <laughs> I didn't know. I thought that was a lot of money to yeah. host an event. I figured we'd have to increase it depending on food and drinks. Like, mm-hmm. I knew that would be an issue. But I really thought that was enough. Mm-hmm. And uh, Bobby kind of came in like two weeks in. It's like, bro. And, you know, I was like, okay, double it. And like a month later, he was like, not even, we're still in. No. Like, I was like, okay, we'll go up to like 120. And he's like, and then another month later, he's like, all right, we're already over budget there. I was like, just don't tell me anything else. Yeah, just make it happen. Make it happen. But and let me, me know how bad it was after. And uh, so he put it together. I was like, bro. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was like, Alex, my partner, I was like, Alex can never see these numbers ever. So, so, <laughs> so, so did y'all have videographers? We did, yeah. So we've got all the presentations on video, and they're still kind of cleaning all that up. Um, and then they also had a videographer kind of just walking around and they're kind of doing some stuff with that as mm-hmm. well. So we'll have some really good content from it that we can use. Hey, how you doing? What's going on? Yeah. 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 Good. What's up, man? That we can use in advance of next year. Wherever you want to be. This dude's been all over the place today. Uh-huh. Yeah, it looks like you've been signing up playing, bro. Yeah. And the food. What is that? It's where you want to be. The food? Yeah. It's that was like ground zero for Idaho. Yeah. Yeah. The the food, food, the food, the the Paris, and, and the the yeah, you know the food, you just don't know the food. So, right. like, so Thibodeau's, Thibodeau's, Thibodeau's in the food, yeah. And all those cities. Like, yeah. Where that camp was or something like that? No. I mean, for sure, at least one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You should have seen the blue roofs that were still up over there. I mean, oh, dude, it's wild. They had churches, apartment complexes. Dude, and houses. there's so many churches out there that went and signed with MMA and they haven't seen a dollar in like a year. Uh, and they're all locked up. And like one of them, one of them left them and went to another firm. I, I got the call from one of the lawyers. They went to Chopin. Oh, yeah. And Chopin, like you know, like I like Justin. His personal. Yeah, I know. They're all the PI guys. Oh, they're all the ones. So Justin calls me and goes, Justin calls me and goes, hey, I just got this church. I was actually going to call you and see if either we could work together or you could just give me advice. I was like, yeah, I know you want advice. Yeah. And he goes, but now I really need advice. And I was like, why? He goes, MMA is like, we're claiming that they're entitled to like hundreds of thousands of dollars in fees. And there's not even been any money released. And I was like, yeah, they didn't do anything in the claims. We're going to figure it out. Like, like, let them file their lien, let them do whatever they need to do. Just get the client as much money as possible, let the entire attorney be sit in the registry, and then you get out of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I was yeah, like, that's just, all you just get the client paid, worry about the fee at the end. Like, yeah, that's all you can do. Mm-hmm. All you are, are they, do y'all not, because, I see y'all at all of the PA conferences, public Do y'all attorneys not have conferences that we don't know about that y'all attend? Yeah, I don't think we do. No, we should. <laughs> we should. Well, we should. you know, it's hard. So I, I think we should. I don't think we ever will. We, um, and the reason is there's very few firms that get along. Uh, um, and the reason for that is in almost every sub-specialty in law, like personal business, right? Um, you are where you are. So if I'm a New Orleans personal injury firm, that's kind of my area. And I might expand and I might open offices, but I'm not actively trying to get personal injury cases to Seattle, Washington. Mm-hmm. So naturally, if I'm a personal injury lawyer here, I have more friends with people all over the country. As a result, there are literally more conferences than I can count for personal injury firms. Yeah. There's AHA, they do two or three big things a year. There's, um, Na- what's the other one down in Miami? Oh, yeah, National Trial Lawyers Association. Yeah. They do a really cool one in Miami every year. I even go to it, even though I'm not a personal lawyer. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. And I can actually usually pick up a ton of business because lawyers get that stuff every mm-hmm. once in a while. 
Um, there's like all these things in the mass talk world. Even though they're all competing, they all kind of play nice because there's so much business. This is the only industry I've ever seen, ever in the legal field, where like a storm will hit Louisiana and Texas lawyers that don't even have a Louisiana lawyer will come in and start like illegally soliciting claims. Yeah. And, they, and they'll start signing claims even though they don't have any. And it's not just Texas, I'm using that as an example. Mm -hmm. But like, I was horrified, because keep in mind, you know this, I can't even take claims, right? Like, that was my work, was like, sewage backup, fire, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. No one was coming from out of state to pick up my sewage backup. Yeah. Like, you know, no one was trying to get that, they don't know how. So when I got to like Charles, I kind of figured like there wouldn't really be any competitors because at the time there were only two other law firms in the state, and then the personal injury firm from the Charles blew up. Like I kind of planned on that, but I did not expect that there would be like seven or eight out-of-state firms with no attorneys in Louisiana at all, mm -hmm. like collecting work down there, and like and literally knocking doors and paying contractors. He, like one one firm, I'll let them say nameless, but they literally paid contractors five hundred bucks for a signed contract, and they said, "Look, go get the roof, and then if you can also get them to sign this, not only will we get you paid, but we'll give you five hundred bucks." And they they were just signed. Mm -hmm. It was crazy. And and I've heard I heard that conversation before where uh, one state's attorneys would be like, "Well, you, this attorney is not even supposed to be doing anything in this state," and y'all say it, but. If nothing ever happened. Is it one of those things where y'all just say it and it's just... You know, it's hard to prove. Uh, <laughs> there is a Texas-based firm that allegedly has a massive hammer coming down on them, which is the mm. um, Allegedly, because they were even running TV ads here. Wow. Um, and to run TV ads in Louisiana as a lawyer, you have to get this approved by the bar. Mm -hmm. And they did not do that. Oh. So other lawyers down here who don't even do this work got super upset about it. And they did ads and did all that. And allegedly, like three months ago, they made a presentation to the chief disciplinary counsel in Louisiana. The problem is the people they want to hit are the partners that live in Texas and they don't technically have jurisdiction over them. So currently the thought process is do we go after the two or three Louisiana lawyers they have now and ruin their lives or do we try to see if we can like, refer to the AG to criminally prosecute them in Texas? So, decisions, decisions. I guess. Texas is going to lose that on property with each other. No, and, and they can't, right? Like, the Louisiana Bar literally has no jurisdiction over someone that's not licensed in Louisiana. They could sue them to stop them from doing something, but that's just civil. But the AG does have um, unauthorized practice of law criminal power. So I don't know which way they're going to go. I mean, I hope I hope for the Louisiana people for lawyers' sake, because I think they just, at the end of the day, with the exception of one of them, I think at the end of the day, they just took a job. Yeah. You know? I hope that the answer is not let's just bar the Louisiana lawyers, because then it kind of lets the Texas people that started it just walk away. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we're pretty careful. Like, for instance, I don't have any one license in Kansas. Kansas got thrown, like, a tornado just ripped it in half tomorrow. I would not be out there until I had a Kansas lawyer on my roster. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and, and I'll do it. I could maybe do it within 24 hours, but I would not you know, be out there until I have someone. They'll be right there with me. You know, mm -hmm. oh. um, like it's just it's just the only ethical way to do it. So we literally have people physically licensed in a lot of states, but every single state in the whole. Mm -hmm. And that's why. So if we had a big thing in Texas, we could all go. We have two Texas lawyers, three Texas lawyers. Yeah, a lot of a lot of a lot of my Louisiana lawyers are now picking up Texas licenses. They say Texas is the modern day gold rush for you attorneys. That's what I hear. Uh, it's it's hit or miss. I'll tell you, we want the next star to be in Alabama. That's, mm. that's what we want. What's special about Alabama? Well, it's better for us. Yeah, so so they have no PAs. That That's not why we They don't exist. I would rather a store in the state where there are PAs. But yeah, we put it on a silver platter. But from a business standpoint, Alabama, there's only long and long mm. other than us. 
And we have in our sister firm, Alexander Power Trial Attorneys, is the largest personal injury firm in Alabama, hands down, period, and stop. Mm-hmm. Like more billboards than any other lawyer in the country. <laughs> they run ads every several seconds on all the TVs, they run radio, which means they have a database of all these people for the last 20 years that they've been in contact with and represented, so ethically they can reach out to them. Mm-hmm. So we can actually just text message like literally hundreds of thousands of Alabama residents in an area where there's a because they're already your clients. And start signing them up. Oh, yeah. So, you know, usually the lawyers are like the dead weight in the generate client relationship, right? Mm-hmm. So then it, they will not be the dead weight in the generate client relationship. That's good. Mm-hmm. We'll Those be the heavy lifters. Absolutely. So, so, I mean, y'all attorneys usually wear real nice shoes. So who's going to be your boots on the ground <laughs> if that happens? It's going to be all of us. I mean, all of us. So keep in mind, our sister firm has 130 lawyers in Alabama. Ah. So, so y'all, 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 700 employees in Alabama. So we can, we have unlimited resources. See, I'm uh-huh. used to attorneys sending out people like us, but you, it sounds like you're saying, yeah, we're not going to knock doors, we're not going to solicit. No, I mean, but I mean, but as far as we're literally going to pay for the town with billboards, pay for the town with Got TV, it. radio, we're going to be texting people from our, like anyone that's ever interacted with Shannara, they'll be getting texts from Shannara, we will put Alexander Shannara because it's like a mini celebrity, like people dress up as him for Halloween yeah, and stuff. Really? Yes. Like, we will be putting out. Alexander Star on the TV, on the radio, saying, look, you know, I started this firm, like, all, all they do is this work, like, come trust us, we're gonna help you. So what is the bottom? Is he like, is he like a character? Does he dress like, like the Sears sucker type? Spending money on advertising. Do Anthony Lopez in Miami? No. Okay, I see. He's Miami doesn't right. really have that lawyer because it's so <laughs> fragmented. Like, um, some, some geographic areas, like here we have more regard, some yeah. geographic areas have, like, a PI lawyer that's always on the Right? So you gotta keep in mind that means kids are like growing up seeing his commercials all the time. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Morgan, uh, yeah, in Morgan, our area is Morgan Morgan. Yeah, John Morgan. Yeah. Yeah. For the people. Yeah. I've had a lot of I've had a lot of people come to me saying they take the marble Well, there's a reason for that, and I don't I'm not even mad at it. Like so Morgan and Morgan bought the nation's law firm, right? And then Morgan and Morgan recruited Bill Sanoff said house him at the nation law firm and said you're officially in charge of property tax. Okay? Anyone that knows Phil knows fundamentally he is a nice human. Like you can't sit down and have dinner with Phil and be like he is that's physically impossible. Anyone like sat down and all talk to him? He's, he's a he's sweet awesome. one, right? Yeah. But there's a lot of people that will tell you behind closed doors that he's a liar, a backstabber, and the reason for saying that actually, I believe fully, as I sit here today still, is that when they hired Phil, Morgan Morgan said, go do whatever you need to do, make whatever promises you need to make, like money is no object, because we have more money than any other law firm in the country, like we will do whatever we need to do. You build this and you're powerful. Mm-hmm. Walmart Nations is still king of the castle over at Nations, even after Morgan bought it, right? Mm-hmm. And Mark Nations tell him, no, you're not doing that, no, you're not doing that, no, you're not doing that, but he went and made all this promise. Mm-hmm. So that's why Phil, if you notice, Phil's kind of disappeared from like the public eye in the last year and a half. And I, I really feel strongly that that's because Phil did what he was told he would do. And then after the fact, he was told that he can't do it. Mm. You know, so I'm not, I don't think that's Phil's fault. Yeah, right? I mean, I Oh, and then they fire you, and then they fire you, and then they fire you, <laughs> or you just go and quit. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and I'm inside baseball, like, I met with John Ward um, about right after I don't know, maybe two weeks after I don't know, see him. Basically, I would go over to Morgan Morgan because he's not happy with how everything's going. He's mm-hmm. like, I don't really create that for you. Mm-hmm. But that's how it started. Yeah. Yeah, I've never gotten any complaints about film stuff, just the, the attorney stuff. But you'll hear lots of PAs and stuff be like, oh, who lied to me? He didn't hate me. And it's really, in my opinion, derivative of what happened with that whole power structure. Like, I don't think if Phil looks at you and says, I will pay you this, he ever intends to go back on that. But, you know, what Phil didn't do a good job about when he was going on board is figuring out what the power dynamic was. He assumed if Morgan and Morgan told him, yes, you can do this, that yeah. that meant he could do it. He didn't know that he had to also get a group of nations. Mm-hmm. It's just been a nightmare. Oh, yeah. And he ate, bro. 
if you got that letter, write your invoice when I tell you money comes in, it's going to have more hours. But if, if you write that invoice right after your estimate, they're going to argue that's all you ever get. And even if you write your invoice for high based on the total amount of your estimate, right, you're going to be like, hold on, wait, you can do 600 hours, right? That estimate, I don't think so. You know what I mean? So on the big commercial plane, that'll actually be right? a very this work. It's, that's part of our job that I hate here in this state. It's like always kind of have the advisor guys in the background, like unheard of, you see you pay your money to you, make sure you get paid. Because the music is great in the sense. Yeah, my contract is three pages long. There you go. There you go. For real. Like when I be seeing like the PAs with the one page uh, set up, I be like, I wish I could do that, right? But I know human nature. <laughs> and I, yeah. Hey, I, I, in every scenario. Listen. Yeah, that's the thing, right? People will get slipped with you, no matter what. It's they will. It's in. It's everywhere. Yeah. yeah. If you hit that home run at the PA, yeah. locking in that commercial claim is like that's your home run. Oh yeah. yeah. And then Absolutely. to hit a home run, the right pitch, and then it's right there in front of you, and then they take that. Oh yeah. It, it will hurt your heart. I have issue with that Oh, really? It's like trying to the PA? Yeah. What's wrong with that? It's like, like, you have to do in the future, like you said, another protection. So, it's like, when you get one of those, like, yes. <laughs> yes. Can you show me how to go? Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> hey, man. Okay. We met you the first time we came here. I remember that. And we'll make it right. We'll make it right whenever we can, right? Sometimes we can't make it right in the context of pace because of that. Because you didn't get what you needed. Yeah, it's a learning lesson. Um, however, I've done stupid shit like paid a PA to come look at a stain in my kitchen, you know, and then paid them like 40 grand. <laughs> <laughs> let me know. <laughs> to let me know that I didn't have a claim. You know? So, Kaylee, yeah, you, you a good man, man. You a good man. Oh, that'd be so creative. I was just on the phone with the show yeah. yesterday. He called again. He was like, oh, I got bad news. My air conditioner was just leaking all over the place and stuff like that. And he had just did, I had just closed the water. And then he had somebody come and knock on the door and he started the roof cutting. And then and he's got steaks, steaks, and he gets the steaks. And I'm like, and then he calls me and says, oh man, I got bad news. I got a warranty from my air conditioner. Okay, so what happened? And he's explained to me the whole situation with the air conditioner. It's still yeah. That's my name. another plane. Oh, uh, God. The best thing you can do with this next situation that you have is call me first. We're brothers. Once I do a play for you, I'm in, I'm, I'm yeah. in for life. Yeah, yeah. yeah forever. To call me before you do because that situation right there, you're going to be more alive than the assets. They're going to, you know, they're not going to want to, they're not going to want to, you know, renew your, your, your policy next year. So, so you don't call it every play. I don't call it every situation. You review the plane first. Well, well, Figure I, out if it's yeah. you want to pursue. Yeah. Um, I guess what you, um, you don't call in a claim where it's obvious that it's below the duck. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But you yeah. know that they don't. Yeah. 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 Well, you know what I mean? Um, I told them this. Uh, I guess there was something, something so Bobby and Dragon said spend as much money as he can. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Say less, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, let's definitely like get a Say no more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a. Uh, it's bad for probably. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how you, you got to say it. I don't want to. Yeah, that's what I want. Well, oh, I know that I know that I'm gonna get to see him toss it up. Oh yeah, okay. I'm gonna do it. I know that. And it's, it's also, drinks want to get it off. Uh, the crab claws as well. Don't don't want no other appetizers. It's hard for us. Get like a couple of dozen. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah.
you know, but you can rod still fly. Oh, yeah. Oh, the charm Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. So, the plug there. Jump on one crab into it. Yep. One head crab into one of them, and one crab into the other side. Yeah, yeah. The only crab you've ever heard of them. Yeah, never. Yeah, never. Unless you're allergic. Exactly. There's always an exception. Yeah, but I feel like the uh, those shirts are always the biggest. Uh, yeah, but this one, you know, it's up like you said, a couple more from the suit. So come on, appetizer wise. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, Let me definitely get a gumbo. Oh, okay. that's up, gumbo. They have these gumbo. The big man. You never know. Some places you go, man. Oh yeah, I knew it was a trick. Yeah. 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 So, is there no difference working with Galen Hill? Because you you, you, you you like a journeyman, right? <laughs> no, 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 the difference working with Galen is tremendous. I mean, like, Galen's the type of person I've been looking to work with ever since I got into this so, business. You don't know this, we did tell you this. So, he emailed me, and I, I remember, I think the subject line was like confidential or something, right? And he's like, look, please don't let this get out, but I'm interested in potentially making the jump. And, uh, you know, here's my resume. Like, would you be interested in talking? And that was unsolicited. I did not reach out to you. Right? They were going to reach out to me. Well, have they reached out yet? They, they had. had I, asked out. Them, I asked them what the law firm was, but I didn't say anything. Oh, I had no idea. You they cheated. They told me it was, it was, it was, it was Harrison. Oh, and I was like, so I don't know. I'm I had no idea you cheated because yeah. I wrote him back and said, well, I literally just paid a recruiter to go hire you, so let me cancel that. And <laughs> well, I made someone to approach him because what I didn't want, it can, it, you know, look, but the legal side of this industry is relatively fractured, but I didn't want to be the person that helps make it worse by going and trying to smash people as people, but I knew I wanted Jared. My sense was, and it turns out I was right, that Jared was here, he was doing this work, but he was kind of on an island, and didn't have a lot of support. Right. But that was my guess, right? And candidly, when I look at the field of lawyers in Louisiana right now, there's like a bunch of farmers now doing this work, right? Like Morgan and Morgan, but they don't really have a presence, and there's no one that's really, that, there's no killer that I can identify, right? Um, MMA, there's no killer at MMA right now at all. There used to be like some really awesome ones. I think maybe they still are in Texas, but you don't hear about anyone in Louisiana that's like crushing it. Mm -hmm. You hear about someone. There is someone in Louisiana for them that is aggregating thousands of claims and creating crazy spreadsheets, but that's not for me, mm -hmm. right? So like when I look at all the competitors, honestly, it was the weirdest situation I've ever been in. I was able to identify three attorneys in the entire state that I was interested in hiring. Like. Other than that, I was just going to hire someone with no experience to train them up, right? Um, so I literally gave those three names to this recruiter and said the only way I will pay you is if you get me one of these, or all three, whichever you prefer. Um, and Jared would go me the next one. I have no idea, man. Now I feel I'm probably going to go pay her. Like, it would be the right thing to do for me to pay her. She didn't even tell me she was shouting before. So it kind of like hit before yours. Well, I think I hired her the day. Well, oh, you know what? I think I got your like in deep like we're interested. Oh, that's yeah. That, that, okay, that's what it That's what it was. Then no, I literally, the had reached out I literally to hired a recruiter to call just the day before you right. emailed me, and she never told me she had done anything. Right. So, oh, so, so there's an. See, I know there's a headhunter recruiter. Yeah, exactly. Hold on. So, so, are you saying that there is a firm that? But you attorneys know about all they do is uh, head hunt attorneys. There's a number of them. Yeah. Really? Tons of them. That's how I got my no. position prior to. It seems like it's easy to head hunt an attorney. Hey, I'll uh, pay you whatever the hell you want. No, indeed. No? Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pay you whatever the hell you want. <laughs> um, yeah, no, indeed. Because you don't know who's looking. You don't necessarily know how to contact them other than at their work. Um, 
they're not going to talk to you at work, right? If, you, if I called Jared at his office and he's working in an office with all these other people, and I'm like, hey, I was wondering if you'd like to work with me. Like, <laughs> this is a... Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, and again, there's like the tactical side of it, right? I'm assuming by calling him that he's looking to jump. Mm. He might not be, he might be very happy, so that actually might make it harder for us to have a professional relationship going forward, right? Mm -hmm. So the headhunters have found this like, great niche for themselves. Almost. See, if you was, almost, was a little bit long. You might have been that. So, you know, like, but the headhunter has the ability without disclosing that I'm looking or disclosing that he's looking. Just to get a feel. Yeah, right? I'll get calls from headhunters to date all the time. Hey, I have, you know, six different attorneys with a little bit of experience in this area, licensed in these states, would you be interested in hiring? Like, they call me all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're going to charge me when they do that, right? But, um, that's interesting. And, you know, they're also calling people like Jared all day. I'm sure, like, no one in our office says it, but I'm sure you guys get Oh, I message right? CJ all the time. I, I've got to have, like, six recruiters reach out to me. Yeah, no one in my office, office ever recruiter. tells me that they got recruiters calling them. But I'm sure. So I mean, I'm sure it's all our people. They all reach out they need people. Yeah. yeah. You know? So how, how does, because you've mentioned that you narrowed it down to three people. How does he even get on your radar? Well, I was looking for lawyers that I knew actually handle this work and actually had experience handling this work. We're friends and, on Facebook. Yeah, we're friends on Facebook. Yeah. Um, and despite all the pumping that attorneys in Louisiana are doing right now, or really everywhere, I knew that there were only a couple of firms that were actually, that were actually had experience in doing this work. Mm. So it made it really simple, you know? So then I looked at those firm websites and it's like, well, there's the owner, unless they're having a lot of financial trouble, they're not doing it. And then let me see, like, who is their, who is their top Louisiana lawyer that they have? Let me see. Now let me look up that person and see if they file cases. See what they're doing. You know, how do you determine? Oh, okay. I was just about to say, how do you determine who's top? Because you can just go through the look and then see who's you actually top, right? So like, I'm in a, I'm in this world. You're in this world, right? Like I'll hear, oh, so and so has this big case, and you know they're doing great, or so and so's getting their butt kicked, and you know. So we also just hear things. Some of, some of it anecdotal, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, Jared, in my mind, and I know that's not exactly true, I think he came on a little before that, but about halfway through kind of the Laura rush, all of a sudden Jared's photo is showing up all these places. He's even picked up by a new firm, so they're pushing him. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you also had your own firm simultaneously, right? I did. Yeah, I did. so you were like of counsel in. Yes, yeah, so I had my yeah. own firm that I didn't Galen, <laughs> 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 yeah, like also you'll have an assistant, law clerk. So yeah. Like, I, was, I was doing all my work by myself. I mean, I was my receptionist, my bookie, I mean, I, my my researcher, my you know. That's really what I was able to offer. He, he, I did not like write a check, like check. No, what I was able to offer him was that's a resource. No, he was having to deal with how to get the trash taken out of the office, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that well, takes away the time that you need to help your clients, right? Yeah. So I was able to say, look, man, whatever you need within reason, you're gonna have it. Like. If you call me up and say, you know, I think I'd be a much better lawyer if I had a massage every day, that's not happening. But, but you know, with a chiropractor, you chiropractor. No, but the actual professional things you need to be you, we will take care of that for you, and you don't have to stress about it. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest, man. And, and now that I know what was the different, the, the differentiator that what brought you to game, you look fresher. Oh, thank you. No, you, I mean, I, you I, I, I look healthier even? Yes, yes, yes that's that's true. true. Yeah. <laughs> the well, office looks fresher now that he's here because he's also very, like, happy and cheery. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm really I'm, good. I'm yeah, yeah, everybody feeds off of it. That's how I found you. When in the event, I'm like, he was the light. And then the event that we were at, he was the light. That's the first that All of And then so... But then in this, in the early event, he was just excited. To be it's funny, everybody that met us like, it's, it's been great for the office. Like, um, we didn't even know your work ethic or nothing. We said, him. Yeah. We, we also hired another, we hired another guy recently 
Um, well, I'm getting like amazing feedback about in terms of attitude, Renee. Oh, dude, everyone loves Renee. Everyone loves Renee. I, I love Renee. Everyone loves Renee. He's like everyone's happy old uncle. So he's <laughs> yes. a little bit older. Yeah. yeah, we hired him to help assist with trials. So that's all he's doing. He doesn't have his own case. So when you say assist with trials, you mean like litigation? Is that what no. you mean? Okay, trial. Like, ah, he won't help so when he finally goes to trial. Up, but mm-hmm. he's not like, he's not involved in the beginning helping draft documents. He's not involved with it. Like, he's not really interfacing with the client. It's like, like, okay, okay so we're please. a few months out from this trial and it looks like it's coming. He then will start to get involved, start to assist. So like, if Jared has a trial coming up, you know, in three months for a big case, and it doesn't really look like it's gonna settle or maybe it shouldn't settle, right? For various reasons. Maybe the numbers aren't there, maybe maybe there's a reason we really should try this case. Jared can go to Renee, because Renee's only gonna have five or six cases on late at a time. So we've got the capacity and be like, hey Renee, like we're gonna start taking these depots, we're gonna start having these hearings, and we're gonna try this case together. That's what we're there for. So Renee's like, let's do it. So Renee's an old DA from the Fouche Parish. So he's done all that. And then he did some defense work briefly and tried cases there. And then he went to a big personal injury firm and helped them try cases. Uh, so that's his background. Uh, great addition. He's like everyone's sweet old uncle, though, like when it comes to the Like, he's very different than my corporate personality. And it's really important. And I think, I think Lori and I probably have similar corporate personalities. I think we're both kind of dicks, right? Yeah. So I think it's really important. <laughs> Oh, so it was really important to have someone who was going to be the polar opposite that was still going to be tough and aggressive, but was going to be that, like, hey, you know, like, a jury's going to love him. So it's, it sounds like when you, so he's not just the hey guys in the office, he's the hey guys with the folding counsel. Oh, I think that's his personal oh, that, that, That's and so much value that he adds. You yeah. know, so, yeah. Yeah, and, 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 and he's really good at talking about it. He, he is a sweetheart. That is the only way to describe him. Like, people buy these from what they like. Yes, he is. He really is. He's he like it. But he also is not scared to trust. Like, he sent me this memo. I gave him his first case. He literally was started. Renee, is he Haitian? No, Renee Gotro. He's okay. Cajun AF. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, Cajun AF. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 yeah, Renee Gotro. It does not get more Cajun than that. But, um... But yeah, very, very nice. Like, so I gave him his first case, and he sent me a memo. First of all, that's a wild memo. After assigning a case to a lawyer, you mean like legit, like, like tangible or email? No, he emailed it to okay, me, yeah. but he had created, he had looked at the file and created a memo with all his impressions and really thought the next step for Wow. Um, usually I get a text, hey, here's what I'm thinking, right? Well, that's cool. Yeah, yeah like, it works. <laughs> um, so I read it, and one of the things he's suggesting is that we continue the trial. And so initially, I'm like immediately filled with doubt about having this time. Because I hired someone to go try cases. And every attorney tells you to go to trial a different time. They either want to settle at the last minute or they want to continue, right? And his memo, conclusion is, I think we should ask her to continue it so we can get these things. Like, I hired her before, so. Mm-hmm. so I go in there and I'm like, Renee, I already knew about all these issues with the case. The client knows about all these issues with the case. Talk to Logan in my office. He knows about all these issues with the case. Like, we want to try the fucking case. We don't want to bring up these issues because they're not ready for trial either. And we're going to win. Yeah, if you push the issue, you like, we're going win. to win. I understand that the case is not perfect and it's not super tidy. And we've got to move another law firm and it's doing something. And I don't know if we can ever fix it. It's like, I thought we were going to try the case. And he's like, that's fine. She's giving me my advice. I was like, you sure? He's like, yeah. I was like, so you're going to try this case? I was like, we're going to try this case. So that's all this ain't. I'm having eye surgery on Tuesday, August 2nd, and he, and I feel so confident that I'm going to be blind like several days before this trial, right? And he and Parker are going to get this case ready and they're going to go on Monday and try it the following Monday. I don't even have to be there. Hmm. Value. Huge value. Huge yeah. value, right? Uh-huh. Like normally when there's a trial, and, and I still will be involved in a lot of them, right? But adding Renee increases our capacity. We've got Lori, we've got Renee, and we've got me. Before, it's like in multiple trials, we're scheduled one week after another. It's kind of like, well, we're really doing several things because I cannot try a case back or back, you know? Now we have the capacity to go trial, 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 trial mm-hmm. like all day. And, and build that reputation because I know they, uh, what they say the carriers keep a file on the, your, your attorney's office. They know who isn't. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
try to fix it, you know. Right. And look, the reality is most cases what's up, like you almost can't justify it to the competitor. Like, why would you pay a trial lawyer to ban the salary of this? It's like only the not, right? Why would you pay a trial lawyer a salary every year? Knowing that 99% of cases are probably going to be trial, and the answer is because now we can't. Mm. You know? And now, you whether we can take my case to trial doesn't, doesn't depend on how busy I am, how stressed I am, what's going on in my life, right? Like, I am no longer a factor in the decision about whether to go to trial. Right? Oh, yeah. Like, we've settled cases before because I was sick. And it's just the truth, you know? Like, every lawyer, like, every law firm will tell you that they don't do that, but they do. Like, we've settled cases before because I had this feeling in the blood. And I was like, man, I'm not going to be able to try this case. So you like, man, I know my client is going to be happy with this figure, but yeah, I could have gotten yeah. more. Maybe, yeah. yeah. And, and the client ultimately is in charge, so it's not like we rammed it down their throat. Mm -hmm. We're going to hold these characters accountable. But whether yeah, I recommend it or whether I recommend against it, yeah. you know, at the oh, end yeah. of the day, we're all human, so even if I'm trying to be objective, I be my hey, subjective things are going to come in. I be telling my clients, I'm like, hey, you know attorneys know how to talk, right? And you know they're going to follow your decision. So when they call you and say, hey, this is what we got, and then they hit you with the, you know, blah, 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 but you decide, because they know how to, you know. Exactly. And, that's, exactly. Yeah. and, and also having, and, and we'll hire a second one. I was going to hire a second one immediately, but now the trial is also super spread out, so I don't think it's necessary. If we get to the point where they're all double, triple stack, then they will I'll hire a second one. But, I'll um, take one of you in for you, too. Yeah, that's the one with, uh, Shay on the tree guardian. Oh, you're doing that one? Yeah, That's I awesome. told her. Right. I, I was in the owner of the tree guardian. Got the the here, right? Andrew. Yeah, no, he's massive, dude. Adrian, I got your beat number one. Let me tell you, I got, I had got some great content with them a, a, a week ago, and my kept my phone died. I, so he's actually about to hire a videographer. Um, my contact. Oh yeah, because here's what he needs for his business. Okay. You know, it's, have you seen his prices are the same? Well, based on, but he, I, I guess he probably deserves it based off the, the tools and toys he got, right? So you hit the nail on the head, so that's why I'm going to have a videographer. It's something you're interested in doing. Oh, he's got all those Because he's got all those toys, so his prices are like two, three times as high, right? Mm -hmm. And then when the adjusters are doing the bills, they're just calling like a tree service and like we're just charging this, right? And then we're trying to cut the bills down. So I was like, look, we need a series of videos about why the way you do it is superior and why the pricing is justified. So like the first one is the way you're pulling the trees off the house and doing them all with the trains and gravel. No one is getting up on this house and plugging the tree. No one, is, and they're not dragging the tree. Okay? They're literally picking it up. Like, it's like it's almost as gentle as two fingers picking it up and removing it. No one else is doing it, right? Mm -hmm. So I was like, you need one series of videos about how that's better for the home, how that's safer for the home, how that's this, how that's that. We need another like video or series that's about the safety to the people, right? Like there are all those videos of tree guys dying. Like you can actually find tree guys dying on the internet. Oh yeah, no, it's, it's a, because it's inherently unsafe. It does not have any. My granddaddy was an arborist. I know it's, it's a very dangerous field. Yeah. And then you know, I think a video on what it takes to deploy, how you set up a camp for that kind of stuff, or what resources you have, you know, fuel running, getting housing, getting energy, like all that stuff. Because they're there first. Yeah, because uh, we, we met each other in passing, and it was real, but we, the vibe. I'll make it happen. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's do it. Because um, I told him, he was literally in our office two days ago, and I said, you need to hire someone. You need to make these videos. Because then we can actually make an FAQ sheet and leave these videos on it. And then you have a plan package that you submit that makes it more likely to just yeah. buy your box, yeah. right? Like, he can show you that some of the springs on those screens are $100,000 a piece one spring. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That so obviously justifies a box. Those gravel trucks with the sawmill, those things are over my life. And he's got more than anyone else has. Mm -hmm. You know? He did the math. If he can actually get paid his ticket price, he should be able to call me in after a storm and do about $5 million a day. And it's not the same. Yeah, I almost, I almost bust out a note for my Maxwell song. <laughs> <laughs> He's a nice guy. You know, he was talking to us too. Like, people are so interesting, right? Because I've met him now. Yeah, this guy, 
Yeah, he, he, he looks like a true guardian. So he told me he weighs 329 pounds right now. Wow. And he's uh, solid, too. He's solid. Yeah. He, his lap is now uh, However, he's super unhappy because he's carrying around a lot of weight. He doesn't like that at all. He's happy as he is Mm. His wife wants a mobile. <laughs> oh. Well, she's trying to keep him off the market. <laughs> Basically. She's trying to keep no, him off the market. His wife just wants a dude. Yeah. And yeah. 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 at 250, he's a big dude, but he's not a big dude, right? And, 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 and I'm gonna try to, I'm trying to imagine, yeah, he, he would be solid because I'm like, what, 230? Him at 250? Oh, yeah, he, he would be like a, like a real, like, what, Adonis maybe? Yeah, he does like, he does power lifts and stuff. But uh, yeah, he's a big dude. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, John Boyle. I'm trying to see. Okay, hey. Life of a content creator. So for the next big storm, he's actually one of the people I'm gonna hook y'all up with because his crew is there within an hour of the storm. They are. They, they figure out where the storm is located the and they the pre deploy anywhere. Where is he? Where is he based? He's based in Latvia, Louisiana, but it doesn't matter. He goes wherever it is. He doesn't care at all. Because he has to go wherever it is, right? You know, so so we'll be first in, first out. So that's the downside of this first out. Because um, for him, as soon as the trees are, are gone, he has no purpose to exist, right? Which makes sense. Um, he literally can accomplish nothing. But uh, what you looking for? A little hot dog. But uh. But he is. I heard somebody refer to it as like the first people on the scene. I heard somebody refer to it as bird dog. You ever heard that phrase before? Yeah. Bird. But he's a first responder for a storm. It's really sense. Like, yeah, that, they, those people get authorizations to show up, like when things are blocked off. And they're good guys too. Like, they got some nice sob stories and stuff, you know, because they're first there. They, so when there's like people stalking in a house or something, you know, they're getting out. They're not hard enough, they're getting out. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, sometimes, he actually has multiple times like assisted like, like fire department police and like getting something open or over, you know, with mm -hmm. the spring. Yeah, he's a jolly guy. Yeah, he's like the biggest, nicest guy. Yeah, he's like, he looks intimidating. I don't want to fight. Oh, no. He's one of those dudes that like shake your hand afterwards. So. <laughs> but, um. I wish he was that long. <laughs> Yeah, but he's not like that. He's a handshaker and he's a hugger. And even those hugs hurt. <laughs> but now I was so upset, man. When I lost that video, because oh, his, his personality shined through, he took me inside the truck. He was beautiful. Well, he will definitely compensate you for it because he knows it's important to him. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? This was literally, we came, he wanted to come meet for like six hours, and half the time he was discussed not that I think he needs videos. I know, he told that to me six months ago, I needed to do it, I was like, so do it. Yeah. Because I, yeah, I, would, I would love to help somebody like him. You know what I mean? Because just because of the, the, the personality and energy he showed me, and he had no idea who I was. He's like that. He's wild. As long as you're transparent and honest with him, he's, he's like the world's nicest guy. You know? That was my brother. 
he has been screwed by me. So I'm at a... Oh yeah, it's fun, because it's so expensive, right? And then the clients also are terrible. Like, you know, the customers, they'll hire him right away, and then the money comes in, and they want that money for something yeah. else. And, you know, the problem is they're gone out of sight, out of mind, but they're the store, right? Even if it's a bad store, they're usually gone in a week. They're just moving, moving, moving. The trees are gone, they're gone. Um, and they won't even do like one tree here, one tree there. Like they'll do it in the middle of a storm, but they have so much equipment it takes them so long to get deployed right. So when they're when they're driving around after a storm a week later, it's like one tree there, one tree there. They're like, it's not worth the thirty thousand a day it costs mm-hmm. them to have a thing set up. You know, mm-hmm. they're just gonna go. So they're out of sight, out of mind. Then that check comes in, even if it's in pool. And now they're trying to get a roof. So like probably people can get home. Mm-hmm. So he always has problems getting paid, but we're, we're helping him, you know, restructure this and that stuff is also gonna help. He's gonna justify the price. Yeah. He's cleaned up some of his contracts now, he'll be much better. Oh yeah. Because in every industry there's a a, 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 a low, a medium, and a high. Yeah. You as the business owner has have to decide where are you in the market? Are you the Walmart? Are you the target? Yeah, see what I'm saying? Like, like, what, what are you? Like, where, where do you find? Are you, are you the uh, the Macy's, right? Yeah, and look, there's scales within that too. Where you are, right? All these level the playing field people, all these connections, and models, what they're pitching is this, right? Which is, I as the homeowner have a right to hire the contractor. So that's true. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like, I would admit privately that. I don't have a right to force my insurance company to pay a massive premium mm. because I hired that contractor, right? If there's seven contractors that will all put on an architectural shingle roof, you're right, there's a low, a medium, and a high, but there's also an astronomical high. Mm. You yes. know, there's that one person that just charges a lot. Do they do a better job? Well, maybe not. Do they have anything that sets them apart other than their astronomically high? No. no. <laughs> and in every industry, there's someone like that, and they cater to the exclusive market by just being more expensive, mm-hmm. right? So I get to carry with some debt, but like, this is too high. The tree guardian, they document why they're that high, mm-hmm. so it's going to be better.